Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu rahmatullah. How do you feel being in a graveyard? What's the first emotion you have when you're here? The first thought that comes to mind um, genuinely is every single one of these graves is someone's loved one. Um, and it makes you think that people come and go as we were promised. Uh, and yeah, this is proof. Sometimes when you're taught to go around and look in the world for signs of Allah Azza wa Jal, potentially uh, seeing graves is one of those biggest signs to see that this is truly الذي خلق الموت والحياة حياة we see on a day to day basis those who are born and this is proof of الموت and that this is وعد الله and that this is حق this is someone's loved one and this is also individuals our loved ones this is their journey and us this is our journey recently you participated in a funeral of someone who is also loved by his family loved by I'm sure yourself and your family someone from the London community and you participated in that funeral how was that for you participating in a funeral of a loved one you know generally speaking when you're in Iraq constantly you see janazat coming yeah it's mustahab to take steps with those janazah to do tashia but in reality you don't always feel something when you do that it is a good it's mustahab because it's that reminder but you don't always feel that connection you don't always feel that emotion necessarily when it is a loved one no it's very different uh, in that specific uh, tashia that we uh, were a part of alhamdulillah i was uh, able to be a part of it by taking the janazah to karbala doing ziyara i have this طبع uh, i i have this from my father as well mm. well i will go to do the ziyara of abi abdullah al hussein alayhi wasallatu wasalam and as soon as you finish reciting the ziyara this the wada mm. where you recite the farewell i never recite that never recite that i have never recited that in my life why never I always say this is not a farewell. I'm going. I'm coming back. It's like I have a shagla. I need to do something. I'm coming back. I try to apply that. I need to its maximum. Make this not the last time. I do not want this to be the last one. And usually, as I am leaving, I say Assalamu alaikum, Abu Abdullah, wa ala al-arwah alati halat bi fina'ik. Alaykum minni jami'an. Salamu Allah. Abdan ma baqit wa baqi al-layl wa al-nahar. Wala jalahu Allah akhir al-ahd minni li ziyaratikum. And I carry on. That is usually on my way out, but I will never recite that. Having that janazah there though, I got to realize that this is his last ziyarah. That's it. He wants to recite the wada'iyya, he does not want to recite the wada'iyya, that's a separate story. But that was his last ziyarah. Then to Abel Fadl al-Abbas, and then to Najaf, uh, where he also had his last ziyarah. And we sat down, we recited the majlis uh, for Fatima to Zahra in that blessed shrine all of this it was like one of the people that was part of the tashia said i still haven't processed it i still haven't believed it the moment he was put into his grave and the sand was put on top even those that didn't cry before started crying became a reality one thing that i could not take my eyes off and one thing that demolished me personally at the time uh, was seeing his son because in Iraqi tradition you have to go out you have to greet those that have come it's difficult especially for one who's mourning the, all those people have come to Tashia you need to stand outside and say salam to everyone and thank them for coming but emotionally you might not always be in that state and I remember s people telling him come out come out and one of his cousins is trying to help him walk but every step he takes he looks back he wants to get that one final look. That, personally, that did it for me. Did you lose anyone from your family that, that you remember that really upset you? Who's the last person maybe that you lost from your family 
Of course, the funeral you attended was a loved one, but it wasn't a relative. It hurts more when it's someone that's who's a relative. Definitely. Do you uh, remember any funeral? Or anyone that you lost recently? Yeah, personally, the most recent loss uh, was my great uncle. That to me was very difficult. Uh, I still remember. Did you attend the funeral? No, unfortunately, I could not. Makes it more difficult. Because I was. So this is what this. I'll tell you exactly what happened. He was very ill towards the end of his life. Yeah. That in itself used to uh, be very emotional for us in the sense that uh, he used to have this forgetfulness and he had specific illnesses. He, uh, towards the end of his life, he, 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 during his life, he was the go-to person from anyone. The go-to person. In all affairs or just in religious? In all affairs. In all affairs, the go-to person. Towards the end of his life, just imagine this, Yani. He got to a point where people had to carry him to the bathroom. That must have been difficult for him. Carry him mm. to the bathroom. He used to forget. I remember sitting in front of him um, and he'll say salam to me. Then he'll get up again after like two, three minutes. Say salam as if I've just walked in. So wow. that you can imagine yeah. was very difficult. Very difficult for him. I'm at work and I get a call. It's the last thing I expected. When was this? This is last year. Okay. A year and a half ago, تقريباً. I get a call. Yeah. Who's the call from? My father. Maybe he needs something. So I pick up. Salam alaykum as salam. He said, look, the family group chats are going to be bombarded in just a second. Allahu Akbar. And I don't want you to find out in that way. I need to tell you. I'm on my break at this point. So I'm in the, the, the staff area uh, and everyone's having lunch there. يعني, there's majmu'a around me. What happened? He said, your uncle's passed away. Fulan, your uncle has passed away. The marat. It's finished. That was potentially one of the most difficult news you I received. had heard. And I had received. And I began crying instantly. People started looking at me like, what's going on with this guy? Mm. He's got the phone to his ear and mm. he starts crying. Because of... Khastan, I'm known to always have that smile at work and not... I got up, I left. Left, sat in the car and just had needed my... That, that time alone. Then, of course, you know, uh, here, the, once the person passes away, the janazah and the tashia is very fast. And they bury them instantly. So he passed away in Iraq. In Iraq. And they and buried him. He was buried the next day. The next day, next literally. Day. So uh, wasn't able to attend the tashia. But I try to say that, alhamdulillah, I try to remember him as much as I can. We're, we're talking a lot about funerals, you know, the janazah, the preparation, washing the body, the kafan. This is all, you know, rituals. But Ibrahim, mm. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, your Imam, and you're in his city. His body stayed for three days. No one called anyone to come for the janazah. No one attended the janazah. His body stayed on the plains of Karbala for three days. No one washed that body. No one put a kafan on top of the body of Abba Abdullah. No one protected that body. No one attended the funeral. <laughs> ya Abba Abdullah. When we brought the janazah to Karbala, when we were in the shrine, as we were reciting the ziyarah, What came to mind was that the body of Abba Abdullah was put together on a hasr. I saw the body, the bodies in general of the janazas, they were brought in kefen. They were brought. <laughs> I 
And all of these bodies that were brought in, they were dealt with with the respect. Hajji, when we used to pick them up, careful, let ضعضع الجسم. When they tried, when one side would bend, everyone starts getting scared. Don't do that. The maid خلي يرتاح خلي خلي على حتى. So I couldn't help but imagine that when the body of Abu Abdullah Al Hussein was on the ground, even after his martyrdom, they didn't come and say, "Dear Balkum, let's bring the body of Abu Abdullah Al Hussein." Be careful. Ya khayl Allah harkidi. That's when you find the narration of the horses trampling over the body of Abba Abdullah. And then when it came to the death in the Tashi'ah, Imam Zain al-Abidin alone, yes, we have the riwayat of Bani Asad being present. Yeah. But you just imagine, I say, Wallah, sometimes you see your mother, your father falling ill, what happens to you? Falling ill. Yeah. Huh? Falling ill. Imagine you are forced to ask people, get me a towel, for example. <laughs> yeah, but why? Why should I get a towel? Why should I get a, a blanket? Why? Should... Because the body of my father <laughs> has been cut into pieces. And I want to get... It says, لا يوم كيومك يا أبا عبد الله It's these specific There were specific things that happened on the day of Karbala That wallah, if your heart is made of stone, it will make you cry You You know, you're going to be remembered for one thing And that is Na'il Hussein I sometimes say that's a great, a huge honor. You know, Na'i al Hussein is Du'bil al Khaza'i. That's a Na'i of al Hussein. He's also a poet. Bishr ibn Hadlam, Na'i al Hussein. Bishr ibn Hadlam, when Imam al Sajjad tells him, Ya Bishr, your father was known to be a poet. Mm. And therefore, do you know any poetry? He says, La'alla dhalik. Yes, I probably do. Said, go and recite poetry. Ya ahli yathrib ala muqam alakum biha qutil al-Husayn fa'admu'i midraar. Sheikh Ibrahim, why do I mention this particular poet? My dear brother Ibrahim, I mention him because Bishr Imam tells him your father was a poet or a na'i. You must also be a na'i. Tell me the impact of Sheikh Rashad Al-Ansari in your life. May Allah prolong your dad's life. May Allah give him a long life. A lot of our viewers, a lot of those that have attended the Majalis in London, especially the last few years uh, in London, and especially in Muharram, know Sheikh Ibrahim, know uh, Sheikh Rashad. And Sheikh Rashad has that mesmerizing voice of reciting for Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. What's the impact on you, on you and your recitation? May Allah protect all your loved ones, Hajina, uh, and protect yourself. My uh, father, I will say my earliest memories of him, genuinely speaking, my earliest memories of him is him sitting on the mumbar. That's like if I was to go back. Yeah. and try to find the earliest memory I have. I can still see this. It was a Husseiniya in the city of Rotterdam. Holland. This is my, in yeah. Holland, this is my earliest memory. Um, sitting on the mumbar, and I was on the lowest step of it, and I was looking up like this. That is my earliest memory. Whenever he had majalis, he used to um, take me with him. Uh, he used to go. F we used to live in Holland at that time. He goes to Germany, takes me with him. He goes to Belgium, takes me with him. Uh, unless it was f uh, far countries, then that was a separate story. And generally speaking, the way my father was, that whatever majlis he had, if he was able 
to take us with him, he will take us as a family. Mm. We'll all go. Um, and especially me. Because I I used to love this, these ajwa, which is why um, once uh, someone asked me, I said, count me as that I have the tarbiya of Manabr. Because I always was under the Manbar. You grew I always, up under the Manbar. And, uh, and this is why you re- the, the upbringing was the Manbar. And you'll realize that usually if I enter a majlis, I don't sit at the back. Mm. I like to sit close to the Manbar. This is this is something my dad taught me when I was you up this when way. I was young. Yeah. So obviously, one thing that uh, my dad stood out for uh, was a lot of people here. He probably will, will not allow me to say all of this, but reality is this: that a lot of people, when they talk about my father's majalis, they say it is قليل that we have khatib mutakamil, lecture, and na'i. Na'i. So I grew up from one side. Hearing the lecture, which he used to research about, which he used to spend a lot of time time on, which he used to prepare and are a result of a lot of uh, information that he had received um, through studies and other means. But he always had this importance on Masaab. Masaab al Hussein. Masaab, always very important. And this the Iraqi tune of, of Na'i which is something that we saw Sheikh Rashad every year comes up with the newest tunes to make mm-hmm. that sad, what we call Hazin tune, to make us cry. Should I tell you something that many people do not know? He has never attended a melody school or a na'i school or anything like that. It's just... He's... And this is, this is the way he grew, this is the way he... And he carried on trying to work on himself um, and, and the na'i, alhamdulillah, his na'i, I, I remember, uh, and I've shared one of these uh, clips on my Instagram as well, when he recites in the Atab al Husayniya, they give him the Thursday nights when they can, because that's when everyone wants the, the na'i, so he'll have like a five night majalis ending on a Thursday, Thursday night, night, Friday night. Eve. Um, so alhamdulillah, this is also something he has become known for. And this is something he holds a lot of pride in. The Masaib of Aba Abdullah al Hussein, the Masaib of Fatima al Zahra, alayhim of the Salati was salam, is something he holds very dear to him. And I grew up on that. I grew up watching that. So you asked me, what was the impact? The impact. The impact was that I saw that and it was put into, as I say, uh, in my blood and flesh. Mm. This is something that entered my blood and flesh, which is why I, I find it very important. Uh, that while focusing on the knowledge side of stuff, while focusing on preparing that which benefits the people, it is also very important to focus on that which is for the sake of mourning the Ahlul Bayt alayhim of Sati wasalam, and especially Imam al Hussein alayhi of Sati wasalam. This is something very important. Unfortunately, sometimes we see that the importance is put on one and not, not the, the other. other. It goes both ways. Combined, hand in hand. Combined is, is very important. And this, a lot of our ulama, you see, uh, this is something that they held very dear to them. I'll give you an example of a marja' that passed away recently. Mm. The recent marja' that yes. passed away. He, uh, his grandson said this to me. Sayyid al-Ruhani? No, Sayyid Muhammad Sa'id al-Hakim. Sayyid Muhammad Sa'id al-Hakim. Rahmatullah. Rahmatullah alayhi. His grandson narrated this to me. Yes. So you know, Sayyid Muhammad Sa'id al-Hakim was during the Ba'ath regime in, in prison. prison. Yeah. And he wrote some of his mu'allafat during that time While without even having the references, but from his memory, etc. And his mu'allafat were many. His books were many. He had one book about Karbala. One book. One book about Karbala. Allahu Akbar. The journey of Imam al Hussein, the things that led to Karbala, etc. The night before he passed away, this is from his grandson. Mm. The night before he passed away, he woke up in the morning, he turned around to his family, he said to them, I don't think I slept last night. Mr. Sayyidina, you were asleep. You were very fast asleep. He said, I can't remember resting, I can't remember sleeping. They said, no, you definitely slept. So he started thinking. Thought, he said, then that must have been a dream that I saw. In his dream, he saw some books 
mm. laid in front of him. Very famous books. Mm. His own books. No, very famous books, books. of past scholars. Of past scholars. The most famous of our books. Out of these books, it had one of his books. He's that written so many books, but that one stayed out. That one stood out. Karbala, he saw that in his dream. That morning he passed away. Allahu Akbar. This importance of Masaib, the importance of remembering Abi Abdullah al Hussein, is something very important. And in general, it helps you. Wallah, it's khair al dunya wal akhirah. Al khair kulla. Of course, we all have a connection with Imam Al Hussein, alayhi salam, no doubt. But is there a special personality from Ashura that when that night comes, that connection becomes a connection that makes your heart bleed, puts your heart in pain? Who is that connection with for you, Brother Ibrahim? Oh, definitely. Um each night has its own feel. Uh, personally, however, I should say that in the past few years, Ali Al Akbar. Ali Al Akbar. Yeah. Interesting. But why? His masaib. From the start to the end, you see. There's specific. Th- يعني, why Ali? Why Ali al Akbar? Haji, when I look at Ali al Akbar and I see the relationship that he had with his father, Imam al Hussein Ali al Sattu and that even from the moment of giving him permission, Imam al Hussein, narrations say this, he did not utter the word when he said, when he asked for permission to enter the battlefield, he didn't utter the word of go. He and cried. he didn't say, no, don't go. He cried. He cried. Allahu Akbar. Ali Al-Akbar saw the tears of his father as a sign. As a sign of allowing him to enter in the battlefield. It's the permission. He went in. Went into the battlefield. Even then, Imam al Hussein is looking carefully. What does it say? Layla, his mother. Mm. Look at this family. And you've got this. Layla is standing by the tent, looking at the face of Imam al Hussein. As if it is mirroring what is happening on the battlefield. She sees him lahikan, mustabshira, and she knows that Ali al Akbar was okay. The moment his face changed, she started to the head. Wa Aliya. What happened? She knew something. She said one of the bravest of those or one of the strongest i should say of those uh enemies just approached him go back into your tent pray for your son and this oh. now once you recite these lines of masaib it starts i need to sit yep. under a mambar so if you excuse me i want to sit on the ground when you remember La, ali al akbar's masaib yeah Abu Abdullah. the taste starts and she goes into the tent and the famous lines of poetry These lines they lived through these years where the poet describes Layla asking Allah by the stranger that Aba Abdullah was on that day. Allah. By the thirst of Aba Abdullah. By the one who returned Joseph safely back to Jacob. Return my Ali safely to me. I say, you imagine this. I might يعني, hurt you with this one, Mustafa, but this is the Masaib of the Ahlul Bayt. Imagine you go back home and you find your mother unconscious on the floor. Tears filling her cheeks. What would you do? The narration says he grabbed her head, put it on his lap. And he started weeping and crying. Mother, wake up. Mother, wake up. From those tears that fell on her face, she woke up. Can we just imagine this? When he sees his father, he says, Abba, 
The thirst has killed him. The heaviness of the metal has made me tired. He said to him, you will meet your grandfather soon. And he will give you a cup of water after which you will never feel thirsty again. He goes back out. I said, this is very hard for a person to imagine the final stages of Ali al-Akbar's battle. One of the enemies of Allah says, I swear that I will make his father weep over him. Narrations <laughs> mention that he grabbed his spear and he would stab Ali al-Akbar in the back. <laughs> then he hit him with the sword on his head. He hugged his horse, the blood spilt on the eyes of the horse. Yeah, Ali, yeah. The horse started running towards the enemy of the uh, towards the tents of the enemies. Oh, Ali, they yeah. dragged him over his horse. Oh, Ali, yeah. And they started to cut him into pieces. Oh, One Ali, person yeah. hitting him with oh, stabbing Ali, him yeah. with the spear, another hitting with the sword, another stabbing with a dagger. Imagine in that state he says, Father, come to my aid. <laughs> Imam al Hussein, he comes to him. Can you imagine Haji Mustafa? <laughs> Imam al Hussein on his horse, he sees his son Ali al Akbar on the ground. Narration says that he jumped off the horse and went to Ali al Akbar like a sakar jumps to its prey he didn't get off his horse slowly no he jumped and he sat by the body of Ali al-Akbar imagine in what state seeing your son in he was very dear to his father and then this breaks the heart even more when he says <laughs> Imam al Hussein says to him Ali al-Akbar, I see that you are looking at me and you are smiling. You look, you look the other way and you are crying. What is it? He said to him, Father, this is my grandfather, Rasulullah, holding a cup of water after which I will never feel thirsty again. And he says that there is a cup saved for you. So why are you crying? He said to him, Father, this is my grandmother Fatima. <laughs> Every time she sees a tear dropping down your cheek, she slaps her face. <laughs> All of this, and I'll give you what hurts even more. Imam al Hussein, even when Abu al Fadl al Abbas was by the Euphrates, he tried to pick him up. Although he had said, Al An in Kasara Zahri. So imagine he's saying, My back is broken, and he tried to, and he wanted to pick him up, seeing him in that state. When it came to Ali al Akbar, he said, Ya Banu Hashim, come and help me. <laughs> come and pick up your cousin, for I have no strength to carry him. <laughs> So you can imagine how much this hurt the heart of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, and this is why potentially, maybe, uh, as I said in the past few years, this is what I connect with the most. Potentially, maybe because of my age, seeing, for example, my father, my mother, the way they feel towards that which hurts me. The way they feel, for example, when they see me under stress. But wallah, that will never compare to how Imam al-Hussein saw Ali al-Akbar. What does this tear mean to you? What does the tears for Aba Abdullah alayhi salam mean to you? Those tears... Those tears... Is what I will hold. <sighs> in this grave. I cried for Aba Abdullah. 
This is this is my safety. So I'm before someone comes and tells me I say hey, no. Of course, other things are also important. Of course. But this tea, this is my my najat. Inshallah, inshallah. If these tears are accepted by Imam Al Hussein by Fatima to Zahra, have you done enough? Enough? Have you done enough to face your Lord? Death knows no age. Death knows no age. Death, Death as the Quran mentions, no person knows where he'll die, which location he'll die, and no person knows which time they'll die. That's something we do not. We are not control of. Just like you are not in control of where you're born, you're not in control of where you die. Death knows no age. Are you ready to face your Lord, Brother Abraham? Now or in general? Now. Now? No. I would like to say yes. What makes like you? Yes. What makes you say yes? For what reason? Being fearful of death, or being fearful of meeting Allah Azza wa Jal, or for judgment in general, comes because of different reasons. One of them is that we have demolished our akhirah. This is one of the reasons we've demolished our akhirah. But when you have your affairs together, when you know you've got your affairs together, what's the reason to be scared? What's the reason to not be ready? What will you hold on to now if you're ready to face your death? What's one thing you want to hold on to? Of course, like you said, before anyone comes forward and says, you've forgotten your wajibat, our salah is the amud of the religion, is the pillar of the religion, our fasting is shahar Ramadan, our paying zakat, our goings to hajj, all these are obligations that we must perform and our aqaid is what also we must hold on tight let's put the wajibat on one side alhamdulillah you are studying in the holy city of najaf i wish you and pray inshallah that allah gives you the success to continue this study in this holy city and to gain from the knowledge knowledge of the ahlul bayt alayhum salam but the question is, what will you hold on to? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he was to judge us with his justice, that we may fail, we ask Allah to judge us with his rahmah, mercy, with, his mercy. with his mercy. What does Ibrahim want to hold on to? And definitely with his mercy. If it was for his justice, we have all come short. And the reason I said I would be ready is because of the yaqeen in his mercy وَإِلَّا If it was the justice law, I'm never ready Which is why I also ask general law specific However, in even general, on some days Sometimes you feel that you need to get some things together But I will proudly hold one thing mm. Insha'Allah, Insha'Allah, Insha'Allah Khadim Li Khuddam Al Bayt Al Mustafa That is something I will hold proudly. This is something that I hope to be my hajjah. I hope this, that this will be my safety. I hope that this will be my... Not, not serving Imam al Hussein, not serving Fatima to Zahra. No, serving their servants. This is something that I hope to be something. And I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to allow me to have the love of Fatima to Zahra in my heart truly. <laughs> Imam al Hussein means a lot to all of us, as you mentioned. I have a gift on behalf of the channel. This is for you. Jazakallah khair. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala. And of course, this raya, which was inside the holy shrine. So just to be clear, not the dome, but inside the holy shrine, the bariyah of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. This is for you, inshallah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you a long life, to prolong your life, to prolong the life of your loved ones, your parents, your family members. I wish that you continue in your service for Imam al-Hussein. You continue your service 
in spreading the knowledge of the Ja'fari school and the school of Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salam. But Ibrahim, one of our scholars, I believe, used to dig a grave for himself every night. And he used to say to himself, are you ready for death? Ibrahim, we bought someone to dig a grave. I want you to imagine. And as I mentioned, I ask Allah through the barakah of the month of Shahar Ramadan to prolong your life. But this grave, I want you to imagine that is for you. When you're ready to face it, it's all yours. I leave you to speak to your grave. يلتشيعون ابن عشبون وين تردو إن كان نيتكم تدفنون دخلبون يتحبون والله لما نودعنون 